Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. A few months ago, the world was transfixed by a massive wave of protest in the streets of Hong Kong. The so-called umbrella revolution was prompted by concerns over the future of democracy. First and foremost, because of Beijing's willingness to control the first ever election of the island's next chief executives. After 11 weeks of a tense standoff, the security forces dismantled the barricades and what some also call the Occupy Central movement has since lost steam. One of its figureheads uh, joins us via satellite from uh, Geneva, where he is attending the Geneva Summit for Human Rights and uh, Democracy. His name is Alex Chow. He is the Secretary General of the Hong Kong Federation of Students. Thank you very much for uh, being with us, uh, Mr. Chow. Uh, Mr. Chow. Okay, good afternoon. So the obvious question is, did the authorities win uh, this battle? It was a long protracted uh, standoff in the streets of Hong Kong, but it seems they have won that battle. Do you agree with that assessment? Well, for me, I do not agree with this point of view. Uh, for sure, that well, they have the clearance at the end of the movement, but it does not signify that well, they will win in the next coming battle because uh, right now Hong Kong people they are more politically active in social movement and in different political issues so that means when the government they are going to propose uh, more and more unjust policy or suppressing the people in Hong Kong there will be a more well a uh, uh, great uh, rebound towards the government, towards the authority. And that would be a threat to the authority, but not to the people. So I would say uh, right now, the civil society, they did not lose, but the authority, they also didn't gain a factory this time. But uh, the protests have stopped, and it seems uh, there are some divisions uh, about how to proceed uh, next. Isn't this uh, a victory for the authorities, the fact that there are no more people on the streets of Hong Kong? Well, right now, well, people are no longer blocking the street, but uh, the authority, they also realize that if they want to have the political proposal reform uh, to be passed in the council, in the legislative council, well, the hope would be quite gloomy. And that means that they also realize, well, there's a lot of pressure from society, from civil society. And for the people in Hong Kong, what they are aiming at right now is to reject the proposal proposed by the government. So what next is that, well, uh, uh, when different issues would be popping up in Hong Kong, uh, people have to be more self-organized because now people, they know that they have to be self-organized, uh, forming different organizations, no matter in terms of NGOs, political parties, or, or, or defending, well, different values in different groups, say the academic scope, uh, the, the, the press scope. Well, it is uh, somehow that while well, they are enlightened and they are willing to sacrifice so as to uh, safeguard the values they have been upholding, say, ju uh, democracy, justice, fairness, liberty. So you're saying uh, the umbrella revolution is not dead? Well, it's not dead, but uh, it has transformed into different ways so as to sustain her life. The main issue is, uh, as I pointed out, uh, the election is the first election of the next chief executive. It's uh, scheduled for 2017. And you are saying that Beijing wants to control the process by vetting the candidates uh, through a committee uh, that is packed with their uh, sympathizers. Do you believe there is any hope that they will change their mind and listen uh, to your queries, which are for more transparency and more democracy in that process. Well, to be honest, uh, the hope would be quite little in the upcoming months, because uh, right now the authority, they are kind of fear that an authentic reform in democracy or democratic system, it will bring more harm to the authority rather than help or assistance to the authority. And that's why they are uh, lacking of incentive to do an authentic reform. But uh, it will also, it does not mean that uh, it, it, it will uh, definitely, well, um, eliminate reform away, but it depends on the dynamic between, well, the civil society and the authority. So there will be lots of issues upcoming. It really depends on how people are willing to engage in a movement. And the numbers of people, of course, uh, it is significant. And the mindset of the officials, it will also, well, sway or influence, well, the outcome. But for now, the authorities have shown no flexibility on that very issue. If they don't 
change uh, the process, what will be the reaction in Hong Kong? Well, right now, uh, for Hong Kong people, well, Hong Kong people are looking at uh, 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 May or June, uh, seeing that whether the legis Legislative Council would veto the proposal proposed by the SAL government, by the Hong Kong government. If that would be the case, then Hong Kong people will move forward to uh, different battlefields so as to safeguard different values and also to awaken more people. And they will wait uh, and gather uh, power so as to wait for another battle for political reform. So that would be how the things would be going in the upcoming months or in the upcoming years. Because we know that uh, political reform is only part of the issue in Hong Kong, but there are lots of other issues that would be upcoming. And especially when a time that, well, you know, the authority uh, would already sense that they would have to have more uh, infiltration in different sectors so as to put their people in different groups, so as to uh, brainwash people or to destroy the values that people have been upholding. Do you, I mean, during uh, those protests, uh, I mean, the government has been saying, Beijing has been saying this was organized by outside powers and so on. Obviously, uh, you, you, you deny this, but did you sense that at some point the authorities in Hong Kong and maybe in Beijing got scared of uh, the, the movement and what it could achieve? Well, I'll say the authority of the Beijing, they definitely are scared of umbrella movement, and that's why they uh, forbid people or people who uh, engage in umbrella movement to get into mainland China, just like me. Well, I was uh, also forbidden to get into mainland China. They invalidate my home return card. And the point for doing so is that, well, they fear that, well, the influence of umbrella movement would uh, simply, well, spread it into mainland China. And that would harm, well, the stability of their authority. And that would be the point for why, well, the authority, uh, they are so feared of people in Hong Kong. Uh, are you uh, facing, you and other activists who have been very prominent in this uh, protest movement, are you facing harassment? There have been reports by human rights groups that uh, the harassment that we see in mainline China, and which is obviously uh, not practiced uh, in Hong Kong generally, has now arrived uh, to Hong Kong and that some people, and maybe including you, are seriously harassed by the authorities because of their uh, political advocacy. Um, in Hong Kong, well, in the context of Hong Kong, for the figurehead or those people who could be recognized by citizens, well, they're kind of protected well, by media or people. So, well, the harassment to this group of people, well, it is kind of limited. But uh, 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 the situation is getting more uh, and more deteriorating. Uh, it deteriorated. Say, well, one of the uh, owner of a media, next media, well, uh, uh, he was also being attacked during the Occupy. And lots of uh, citizens who participate in the umbrella movement, well, they are highly arrested by, well, the police. Well, police will use, well, baton or pepper spray uh, to attack uh, the, those peaceful protesters without any uh, parole, well, warning. And that would be the case in Hong Kong. But uh, for, well, uh, if there's any case that, well, uh, mainland China or the SL government have sent, well, spy to follow people in Hong Kong or the major figures in uh, social movement, well, that, uh, uh, that have been uh, that have been the case for well around more than a decade or more than ten years. So well, we could see that well the situation will only getting worse and worse for this part. I mean, Hong Kong is obviously now in this uh, one country, uh, two systems uh, framework. But given the tensions uh, that you've uh, described. Uh, do you believe this is viable in the long term or eventually that uh, there will be a choice both for Hong Kong and for mainland China that it will need to be one country, one system and that eventually uh, there will have to be a decision between dictatorship and democracy? Well, it this uh, mutual effort from both sides. I'll say one country, two system. Well, uh, the original purpose for that is to safeguard the values that uh, uh, Hong Kong people trust so that there will be two systems operated in a country. Uh, so the point is that uh, if, well, uh, 
uh, mainland China and Hong Kong, they could embrace a more just, progressive system. And of course, well, that would be fine to merge as one system. But the point is, well, uh, if right now, say, well, one country system is it simply collapsing, well, Hong Kong's system is being destroyed uh, once and again, and it's like, well, uh, being mainlandization. And that's what worry people for that uh, they have to safeguard or uphold the purpose of having one country, two system. And the situation, well, it is about uh, a bit hard to pe predict because, well, it really depends on the effort of Hong Kong people, whether they would keep engaging in different social movements to safeguard the values. And it also depends on whether the Chinese government would really allow people to voice their opinion but not to suppress them. Last question, do you believe uh, President Xi Jinping wants to rein in Hong Kong and have uh, China's mainland views prevail over the island? Do you believe this is what he has in mind? Uh, do you mean, well, he wants to well, control over Hong Kong? Yes, political control that Hong Kong should okay. align itself with mainland China and forget about democracy, human rights, and so on and so forth. I would say, well, for those uh, top officials in mainland China, as long as, well, uh, the action would not, well, um, sway uh, the authority of mainland China, would not threat them, uh, it would be fine. Uh, but right now, why they are so tense is because, well, they have a fear in mind that uh, whether this kind of social movement happening in Hong Kong will be spread into mainland China and harm the, 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 their development, the so-called development in mainland China. And that would be the point, that would be the concern why, why they would have to pay more attention. And it really depends on the mindset of a people. If they are rather progressive, open, uh, then it would be totally acceptable for having such kind of social movement in Hong Kong. Okay, Alex Chow, thank you very much uh, for being with us and answering uh, our questions. And thank you for watching this edition of the interview here on France 24.